Hi, so one of our users asked if Fibery could be set up to manage a production process and control inventory levels. And I decided I'd put together this explainer video so that you could see how I'd suggest it could be done. But obviously you can elaborate on this yourself. So I've got an app that I've uh, created. It's called Inventory. And this is going to allow me to manage my business process. And my business process involves uh, making and selling cheese sandwiches. So I buy the ingredients, I make a sandwich and I sell it. And my app includes two types. You can see them here. There's the item type and the step type. And um, they're very simple uh, uh, types, nothing special about them. The item has a single select called unit, which allows you to choose whatever the unit of measure is for your particular item. So it could be millimeters if you're a piece of string, liters for milk. But uh, in this case, I'm going to be using slices and grams for the bread and the cheese. And I'll show you the items. We've got them bread, cheese, and cheese sandwich. Uh, so these represent the different things I could have in stock at any one time. And then we have the steps. Uh, so we buy a loaf of bread, we buy cheese, we make the sandwich, and we sell a pack of sandwiches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new type. And this new type is called effect. And the purpose of this type is to link together the steps and the items. So an effect represents a change in the stock level of a particular item. So an increase or a decrease. And each step, whether that's buy a loaf of bread or buy some cheese or make a sandwich, will result in either an increase or a decrease or both in different items. And so I'll show you how I do this. The effect is going to have a couple of fields. We're going to have a number field called change. And this uh, represents uh, the change in the level of stock of the item. We're going to link the effect to an item. Uh, so we can link it here. And each effect can only affect one item, but an item might have multiple effects. And then we're going to link a step to one or more effects to indicate the fact that a step could uh, cause an increase in one item and a decrease in the other. Uh, so there we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a formula field uh, for the name of the effect. And the name of the effect is going to be built up from the change, the number change, and the item being affected. At this point, I'll just go back to the items, and I'll show you for each of the single selects, I've actually added an extra field, which I've called abbreviation. And the idea is that um, you'll see how this comes in handy later. So grams as the unit has an abbreviation of G, and the each uh, measure has an abbreviation of X, like so many times. So when we go to the effects, um, as I say, I'm going to use a name, a formula for the name field for the effect. And the formula is going to be built up from the fields that exist. So I'm going to take the change number and I'm going to follow it by that abbreviation of the unit. So I've got item dot unit dot abbreviation. Um, and then with a space, I'm going to add the name of the item being affected. So by doing this, we create a formula for the effects where the name is built up. So let's make an example, item and change and step. So for example, if we take the buy a loaf of bread, one of the effects that has is a gain of 20 slices of bread. And when we buy some cheese, that affects cheese item and results in, I'm going to say, 200 grams of cheese. So you can see here, we've now got effects of took 20 slices of bread. So that's a gain of 20 slices of bread and a gain of 20, 200 grams of cheese. And when we make a sandwich, there's actually several effects. So we'll use bread and we'll actually use two slices of bread. So that's minus two slices of bread. Uh, if we make a sandwich, we're going to have to use some cheese. 
So I'm going to have, I'm going to say minus 20 grams of cheese. I don't know if that's enough, but I hope it will be a reasonably tasty sandwich. And then when you've made a sandwich, the, one of the effects is you get a cheese sandwich out the other end. So we have one times cheese sandwich. So that's a generation of cheese sandwich and a loss of two slices of bread and 20 grams of cheese. And then finally for the um, pack of sandwiches that we sell, uh, we're going to say that selling a pack of sandwiches results not in plus two, but minus two cheese sandwiches. Now, the reason we do this is we now have these effects that are, occur depending on which step takes place. And we're going to go to the effect type and we're now going to create a formula field. And the formula field will allow us to make a calculation where we accumulate the total effects um, and their impact on the stop levels as the different steps take place. Uh, but before we do that, actually, I'm going to introduce another type, which I'm going to call occurrence. An occurrence represents a step taking place. So an occurrence has a relationship to a step. An occurrence has one step, but a step can have many occurrences. So this is indicating that... Um, and occurrences, for example, on a particular date, this step took place. And I'm actually going to also add a number for quantity. So, for example, we might have um, an occurrence of buying a loaf of bread where the quantity was three. So we bought three loaves of bread. And I'm going to add a date field as well to indicate when it took place. So that's the occurrence date. So now you can see we've got steps that have one or more occurrences. They have one or more effects, and each effect impacts an item by increasing or decreasing its numbers. And an item can be affected in more than one way. So when now we go back to the effects type, <clears throat> we can um, add this formula. And this formula will do this calculation that accumulates... There we go, accumulated count. This represents um, the change for that effect multiplied by the number of times that effect has been instantiated, which is, a, which is the number of times the step has had occurrences and the quantity of those occurrences. And um, I'll just leave it up there so you can get the hang of what that's worth doing. And now with that formula, we can work out stop levels because an item stop level is governed by the sum of all the effects and their accumulated occurrences. So I'm going to go to the item. So I'm going to go to the item type now and I'm going to create a new field, which is the stop level. And that will simply be sum of all the counts of the effects. So now if I go to the items table, I can add this stock level column. And at the moment, we've got nothing, no bread, no cheese, no sandwiches. If I now go and go to the occurrences, I'm going to do the similar thing I did with the effects and create a formula for the name of the occurrence and I'm going to use a very similar similar construction so I'm going to go number I'm going to append a times symbol and then I'm going to have the step name and I'm also going to add uh, the date on the end of it all so you can the occurrences can be distinguished according to the date and because it's a date, I'll have to convert it to text. Um, the there we go. So now, um, if we go to the list of occurrences, I'll make an occurrence, which is a step, a date, and a quantity. So I will say that last week I bought 
three loaves of bread. So this was three times by loaf of bread. And um, I was sensible enough that on that particular trip to the shops, I also remembered to buy a packet of cheese. So I bought a pack of cheese. And yesterday I was very busy and I made, let's say, five sandwiches. And today, this is where the money comes rolling in. I'm going to sell a pack of sandwich sandwiches. I'm going to sell one pack of sandwiches. So now you can see we've got these occurrences. Each of those occurrences relates to a particular step. And because a step consists of a number of effects, each of those occurrences will trigger those effects. And we're using the formulas, we should now be able to see our stock levels. So we bought three loaves of bread, which is 20 slices each, um, but we used 10 of them to make our five sandwiches. And we bought 200 grams of cheese, and we used five times 20 grams to fill the sandwiches, which resulted in three cheese sandwiches. Now, this sorry, it resulted in uh, five cheese sandwiches and two of those two of those have been sold in a pack. So that's in principle how I would suggest you could do something very easily to achieve a, a production management inventory stock level. And once you've established this, there are a couple of nice views you might want to create. So I'm going to create a, a list view with the items and their effects. And I'm going to add fields that I think might be interesting. So for the item, I'm going to add the stop level. Um, for the effects, I'm going to add information about the step and the accumulated count. So what this is telling me is, overall, I've um, uh, done. I bought a loaf of bread, which generated three loaves of bread, which generated sixty slices, and I made sandwiches, resulting in a loss of ten slices, and that gives me my fifty net stock level here and I'm going to call this stock levels um, but you can also represent that graphically so we're going to create a report I'm going to call this stock as well it's going to be a chart I'm going to use the item information and what we're going to do is we'll have the name of the item along the bottom and we'll have the stock level on the y-axis and we'll show it as histograms. So here you can see we've got 100 grams of cheese in stock, 50 slices of bread in stock, and uh, three cheese sandwiches waiting to be sold. I'll actually add a label. Um, and what I'll do is I'll add a label that shows it the, the numerical values. And um, I don't need intervals, so I'll turn that off. And I will add the units so that you can see whether it's grams or slices and you can see it's warning me that you can't add a number in text because stock level is actually a number so i need to convert it to text and then concatenate the unit when i've done that the graph should now show we've got 50 slices of bread we've got 100 grams of cheese we've got three each cheese sandwiches so there's my stock levels shown visually and there's plenty of other things you can do you might want to consider for example adding a formula for each of your steps. And the formula could, for example, calculate whether or not this step can go ahead by looking at the current stock levels of the items that will be depleted. So for example, make sandwich can only go ahead if you have at least two slices of bread and at least 20 grams of cheese. So you could add a formula that shows up um, can this step run? You know, do we have sufficient stock? That could be one thing you could do. You could go to um, your steps and you could add a button uh, that could, when pressed, would indicate that that step had been triggered and the button would automatically generate an occurrence with the date and time that the button was pressed. Um, so, for example, you could have, you know, a log occurrence and you press it that would indicate you've bought a loaf of bread press it would indicate a pack of cheese and that would simplify your data entry anyway so that's a fairly simple quick introduction to how you can do inventory and stock management i hope it's uh, somewhat useful and um, best of luck adapting it to suit your purposes <laughs>